Hey there, Reapings, everybody, welcome back to Serious Creepers Adventures in Seftech Ages. I am currently changing up our little uh, workshop here. Quite a bit, actually. Been on this for several hours now. I tried to automate a few things uh, quite a bit. So let's just go over this, maybe. See what we changed here. This is pretty much still the same, except now I can turn it on or off. And it only the only real reason for that is because of the block sounds, right? The gearboxes and such. A little bit more quiet, I guess, but although this one isn't too noisy anyway. Over here we have the saw. Now I try to completely automate this. There are some issues with this right now because Quark and Cyclic have a problem with placing blocks in dispensers. But basically what we could do if we just want to cut down, let's say, these locks here, right? All I have to do now is put this in here. And that's it. So basically what it does, it uh, it knows... I think I can go behind you without breaking too much, maybe. Uh, a little bit scared, maybe I should go on this side. Yeah, this works. So basically what it does, I have this vanilla dispenser with a comparator to see if there's an item in there. If so, it sends a signal through this block, which turns off this redstone torch, which... Uh, would turn on the timer we have at the back here So it will place blocks on and off again like until it's completely empty and Then it automatically shuts off the timer so we don't have like a clock ticking here the whole time And you don't hear that clicking sound At the same time a cable goes down here to this gearbox and shuts it off So only if there's a block in here and the comparator gets that signal it turns on the saw below Otherwise the saw is completely off So this way I don't have to like toggle the saw on and off You can see it's like completely shut shut off um, there is an issue right now where if you take things like these sidings, if I put these in here, nothing happens. It actually deletes the item completely. It doesn't even spit it out as an item, it deletes them. I have reported this, same happens with like this guy. If I put the thing in here and turn this on, it tries to place it and it just vanishes. Usually they just spit out the item if that's something they can't place, but right now they're a bit broken. So. This one doesn't work too well, unfortunately. So for that case, I have a manual override. So if I turn this on, it turns the saw on as well. So I can like do my own thing here. And I can just shut it off again. So that kind of works. It's nice. It's automatic or automated. So always good to have that. Let me just fix this up here. Okay, there we go. So that's cool. And the, we can fix this though by using, I think, the block dispenser from Better with Mods. However, it requires a Soulforge Steel Anvil, which is a bit expensive, so we need to get into Soulforge Steel. And a couple of things here as well, like Soul Urns and stuff, but that's required for Soulforge Steel anyway. And I also have a Vacuum Hopper here, so it will pick up all the drops now. In a pretty big area, it does... Uh, actually, it does not pick up this, but it also picks up... It picks up the saw in the millstone. So change out the millstone similarly. By the way, if you put, you know, if you didn't know, if you put two blocks around a uh, millstone, actually there's no block behind there, but if you like cover a block with like two, or uh, a millstone with two blocks on the side, it will stop working, it's just blocked. However, like stairs, for example, work. Anything that's not a solid block works, so you can put them next to it. It will still try to output items into these non-solid blocks, but it should be fine with stairs, maybe? It will probably just get pushed up or something. But because I'm using the Ender Hopper, it's fine anyway. So, but uh, same kind of mechanic here, and I think it can get better in there if I go behind here. It's the same kind of prince principle. We have the Millstone Comparator. If there's an item inside, it turns this off, which activates this gearbox again. So basically, the Millstone is only active if I put any like blocks inside, right? So if I like get some netherrack or something, write it down, it will activate, it will do its thing. Do we have like anything I can grind down? Probably not. Uh, it's fine. And then once it's done, it shuts off again. So pretty cool. So I don't actually have to like switch anything on or off. It just keeps doing its thing and it's all good. So now I'm starting to change out. Don't come over here, buddy. I'm so worried about you dying because <laughs> it's so dangerous over there right now. Um, I'm trying to improve the kiln here. So I made a bigger structure, a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. That's a big size. And I'm currently trying to add 9 hibachis down here to get the best speed for this thing. We don't need to use it too often to be honest, but I just want to have it, right? Currently I don't have an off switch for this either, but um, I'll do this eventually. Because once we get Soulforge Steel, what we can make is... Uh, what are they called? Bellows? 
we can make a spring action bellow using Soulforge steel. And this one does not require like a clock like we have with that turntable there that turns it off and uh, on and off. So it's going to be much easier behind here with the wiring. Well, axling, I guess, <laughs> if you want to call it. Um, okay, something funny I want to show you guys though. Oh, by the way, we're going to work on the Soulforge steel today, I think. But if we take some netherrack, remember how putting netherrack into the millstone makes this awful gas sound? Listen to what it sounds like now. <laughs> it's Tootin! Apparently there's a bug with the, the pitch of the gas sound right now with the millstone. So it's like too high pitched. <laughs> I love it though. I wish I could keep that forever. Alright, but I'm going to turn it off for now because video time. There we go. Much better. Alright, yeah, so we want to make for the Soulforge steel today. It's going to be a little bit tricky, I guess. We could probably automate it in a certain way. Like, it's not going to be 100% automatic. Uh, automated. Ooh, shit. I was wondering about this. It does happen. Okay. It's probably because I removed the blocks here. I think once this is, like, filled in again, we should be fine. Famous last words. Um, I'll just do this for now and maybe put some here. Because it should only spread like one block to the side. Hmm. Not sure. It should be fine. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky to automate Soulforge steel, but we can do it somewhat. So, the basic start is, if you look this up, Soulforged, we need a few things. Uh, Soulforge steel, there it is. So to make it, we need A, a crucible, and it needs to be stoked. So we need a hibachi below and, you know, fire it up. And that's why I have these little spots here. Uh, these corner blocks are not required for the kiln anyway, so I'm just gonna put a crucible here and a cauldron here or vice versa I'm not sure and then we have the stoked versions as well And then over here we have the unstoked version, right? So we need a we need to make that guy which is an Unfire crucible, so that's just on the turntable, which is pretty easy to do I'll just get some clay so all we have to do is turn this on put this there and then let this do one cycle and then break it right and you also get clay back every time it does something. There it is, unfired. Why is it storming now? Uh, let's just turn off all the things. So let's just play without any sounds whatsoever. But that should now turn it into a crucible. Uh, it is not. <laughs> Wait, do you need the corner pieces? No, I'm pretty sure you don't. Oh, oh, oh. I think I know what. Hold on, let's double check this here. Uh, I remember this slightly. Kiln. Stoke kiln. Ah, there's two different versions of kilns. Okay. Well, I need a lever then, I guess, to temporarily shut this off. So we can have just a normal fire. So it's going to turn red again. There we go. And now it's working. Okay. So that's like one of the only recipes, I think, that actually requires... A unfired kiln? Like, what else needs an unfired kiln? That's it, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. We just need to do this once, really. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna grab this. I don't have a good way to collect these yet, because the ender hopper is not within range. But we'll fix this. I'll just turn this on again for now. Uh, it's so weird to play this without any sounds. Maybe, you know... No, no, never mind. <laughs> God, I love the tootin'. Okay. But now let's turn this off and this off just so I don't burn my brick. Ideally, it's still landed on there. Ugh, they both landed there. Is my inventory full? No. Why didn't I get that then? That's so silly. Okay, I got them now. Turn them on again. Could probably just use redstone or something down there, but this works. And then we just put this guy here. So now this one is a store crucible. Do we need a normal crucible? No, I don't think we do. I think there's only stoked recipes with this. And it can, do, it can do a few things. One cool thing it can do is take armor pieces that we don't want and cook them down into ingots and stuff. And I think it depends on how broken they are, how much you get out of it. Or maybe it doesn't matter at all. I'm actually not sure. Let me go grab some. We have a bunch. All right, I just brought a very broken pair of boots, which should give us two ingots and six nuggets. So let's do what we, uh, let's see what we get. It's pretty fast too. The more he batches you have, the faster it is. They have like a 3x3 three three range about, around them, where they give like a 
speed boost to things, right? So like the one in the middle gives like a boost to all the ones surrounding the blocks surrounding. Then this one gives a speed boost to these blocks surrounding and so on. So the one in the center here is covered by all these nine uh, hibachis and that's why it's like super fast to smelt its stuff in there. Uh, this guy here, he gets the speed boost from this guy, from this, this, and the one below here. So it's also quite fast. Yeah, look, it doesn't actually matter how broken these things are. You get stuff out of it. I mean, we don't probably need this, but this might be a cool thing to have if you have a mob farm and you want to get rid of these things anyway. You may as well like turn them into valuable stuff, you know? So that's that. And then we also want another cauldron because we want to make a the, the stoked one as well. So let's go do this uh, here. There we go. It's one of those, right? And then what was it? You just put it in a kiln. Okay, there's the cauldron. So we also have a stoke cauldron. Now, again, we need to be careful to not put hellfire dust into this. Otherwise, a lot of stuff will blow up, right? So gotta be careful. But we do need this one for certain things. Okay, so that's the first step to this. Now, soulforge steel. To actually make the steel, we need... Where is it? This recipe here. So we need charcoal dust iron ingots, or coal dust apparently too, coal or charcoal, iron, and then these soul urns. The soul urns you get by placing it below a filtered hopper, like a normal urn, uh, and then do the recipe where you get hellfire dust. Oh, there's another one here too with soul dust, but that comes from this like bloody wood, which eh, probably don't want to do that. Uh, to get the urns, you just again put a block of clay here, and you let this do one more, uh, one turn, Two turns, so it gives you a planter. So if you want like certain things, you can do this too. Then you get a vase, and after this, you get the urn. If you let it do one more cycle, it breaks it, and you just get clay back. And like I said, every time it does something, it does a turn, you get one piece of clay out of it again. So technically, this only costs one clay. And then you just put this into your kiln, into a, a stoked kiln. And I should probably remove this maybe for now. We don't need that, like I said. There we go. Now we have that, right? So we have five of these currently. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to do this. Right? I should place them. Uh, there we go. Yeah, places it below. And now we take eight of this dust. And that's why I said, like, it's a bit tricky to automate. Because if you want to automate this, you have to find a way to drop exactly eight netherrack onto this thing. I've done this in my Serious Remnant series, but it took a while to do. And it was a pretty big setup. But once it does that, it breaks the urn that's below there, see it just drops it, and you get the soul urn, and it plays the new one. So it's it's not terrible to automate if you have like these block places and stuff, see, bloop, and then bloop, hopefully that didn't burn up, no, here it is. So if you have like an ender hopper or something, it's easy to collect, or just a hopper below, right, block this off on the side, which I actually should do anyway, because I don't want this stuff to burn. There we go, okay, so now that we have these soul urns, we need to go get more iron and charcoal dust. So let me go grab this. Oh, and I think we're gonna replace this soon again, because I was just looking at this. This thing is also pretty s slow, right? It's not very fast. But like, for example, we can now get into modular machinery. And it only, to make the, like this industrial mill, it only requires four, t uh, four RF, like FE is the same F as F, uh, <laughs> FE is the same as RF. Per tick, so it's pretty cheap. Like if you just bring, you know, like one water mill is like plenty. Then we can make this stuff as well, um, and it's just a bit faster, and it's not too expensive to make from the looks of it. These are the blocks we need to construct this system. Well, I don't know. I don't know how expensive these blocks are on its own, but I think that's something we should get into very soon. Not yet, though. Not yet. Okay, I got some dust, so let's just do this one one time. So we just put in our iron. I think we can leave this in there, it should be fine. And then coal dust. Okay, it's doing its thing. And there we go. You get the soul forge steel and you get the urn back. So you actually don't need to make a ton of these urns. You can make a couple, you know, so you can recycle them, but you don't need a lot of them. Very cool. But we now need to make uh, this anvil if we want to make that block dispenser, because it was like a four by four crafting recipe. And to make the anvil, we need just seven of these ingots. So. I'm just gonna go do this manually, I guess. I'm trying to think, like, how would we automate this? If it's always eight, the way I've done it in my other series is use a dispenser with a timer and just like shoot it out. And I guess we could use a block detector to detect if there is a block here. The only downside is we need to make sure that we always have at least eight dust in our system. Um, 
yeah otherwise you would be wasting this well i wasn't planning on doing this but now i'm kind of tempted to try to automate this right now so let's get some blocks so we can use a hopper clock for that oh and how do we make a block can we even make this block detector what is this one block update detector this one too emits a short red a red zone pulls every time it is updated through a block update we can't make that one though, so we just make the vanilla one, I guess. Oh, it needs the anvil. Okay. Well, I guess in that case, we have to kind of make the anvil first to do this anyway. All right, we have enough steel now to make the anvil. So let's just go ahead and do this. There we go. But cool, now we have this. Now we need to make this recipe, but for that we need these Polish Lapis modules or whatever they're called. Now, does this have support for JEI? Let's find out. It does indeed. Look at that. So good. Seems a bit laggy if I try to craft it in here, but that's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Cool. So we have two of these. Now we could try to automate this. All right. I think what I want to do as well is just take this out. And I think we're going to make it so that we could get further down this way. Like, I want to expand our base this way, if we can, a bit. Um, this goes towards the river, though, so I don't know how much room we have there. But So I think I'm going to take this out, like here. And this is going to be the whole way down to the next area, kind of. Alright, so I just stuck this out a little bit, so this is where we're going to have our hallway, I guess. And I rearranged the, the axles a little bit up here. So they're coming from upstairs, from our water wheel, and then go this way. So they're kind of be hidden behind here. So we have a one space here, so the lock should be here, right? And hopefully this doesn't burn down. So this is where, I mean, we don't have to put one, but I just like to put them there, I guess. And then on this side, I guess we'll try to build our little contraption now. Now it doesn't need to be big on the front, but we need to be able to ideally do it so that we can also manually craft stuff and not just automatic. That's always a nice thing. Like if it's too automatic, sometimes you don't have the option to you know do it manually and there are situations where you might want to do like a single craft or something uh so the urns would be here the walls would be here we have maybe a glass or something in front of it so we can see it and also or like a trap door and also open it and place it manually or something then we would need a way to ah, no this is actually a good spot so we have a dispenser up here actually before we do this here let's figure out how what the timer needs to be okay so Where's all our hoppers, by the way? Oh, there they are. So we need only two. We gotta make a hopper clock. And we could do it in two ways, sideways or horizontal. I never made the horizontal one, so let's try this. So we do two hoppers facing into each other. Then we need comparators reading out of it. Then we have a block that they feed into. And I think you put a redstone on top. And then you play sticky pistons, has to be sticky, against this. Uh, that's not against it, good job. Like so. And then we need a redstone block. And put this on one side, that locks the hopper here. And now what we can do is if we take, let's say, eight items or something, and put this in here, it switches, because the items go over here, it blocks this hopper. It's a bit hard to tell, right? Like so. This one is free now because the redstone block moved over here, right, like this. And then these will stop so it won't like put them back into this. And then the comparators, as soon as one of the comparators turns off, it um, retracts this piston and lets this piston, who currently is powered, push this block forward. So it goes back and forth like this. And we can just grab the signal from any point in the redstone signal will come from here. So this is the signal, right? Like this so this this can be used for the timer and then we can just take an actual timer put this here take a dispenser and set this to like one or something now the one is not is 10 the minimum okay 10 is the minimum right okay two three four so that was four ticks right so if i put a stack in here one two three four yeah and then it shuts off we put eight more in here. Is this gonna be the right timing then? Should have done something without. Let's actually take these out for a second. Yeah, let's use these levers. No, levers can be placed. Something that can't be placed. I guess the dust? I don't I don't know if that's bad. Okay. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's a little bit too long. So we just take out one block. Okay, so 50. No! <laughs> Snaily died. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's still too long. Oh no! Well, he survived for quite a while. Perfect. Eight items, right? So that's that's exactly what we need. Okay. So that's the timing we need. It's it's 14 blocks in there. Gives you the right timing for this and this set to 10. Okay. So knowing this, we need to set this up here. So this dispenser is the one that shoots out the the items we need. And we can power it from this side, I suppose. So we just need to expand a little bit down here so we can place our clocks. So we have our timer right sitting next to this, set to 10. Okay, I'm actually building the sideways version just because it's a bit easier to do this in here. So it's very similar to what we just did, but instead of putting the hoppers um, or the piston stuff above the hopper stuff, we just put it sideways. And then you have, again, the barrels pointed this way and that redstone dust behind there and behind there, right? Okay, so we need 15 items, no, 14 I think is what I said. If you like power this, for example, so the cable is always on, that means the piston won't be able to retract at all, right? If you turn this off again, it does continue its loop. If you power it now, even though it retracted, it will do it one more time and go back to it, so that's fine. Maybe we'll put the detector here and the placer here, right? So every time you place an item in front of it, you know, it should uh, blink. It does. Oh, it detects it in the entire time as it's in front of it. Oh, that makes it so much easier because then we can just send this signal, invert it, up to there, right? Because as long as the item is here, it will then turn on the clock. And then if it breaks, which it does automatically, it turns it off. Okay, let's try this. Okay, I think that should be it. So basically, I have the cable come from here, go into a block, and then into a redstone... <laughs> torch to invert it and then up here so this shuts it off right so just to double check this now if we place one in front of it it turns it on and then it will break which turns it off Ooh, this should work i think this is gonna work pretty well all right i mean we could always just make sure that we put something in here that's dividable by eight right Although we could do it so that if we could do another comparator and check if there's even items in there if not then don't do this either yeah, that's probably better. It's like a save, fail save. So only if there's items in there and we have a signal in there, this should get turned on, right? So we need to we need like an end gate. All right, after <laughs> changing this a few times, I think I've got it. I'm always a bit derpy with vanilla redstone because I haven't used it in so long. I used to be good at it, but eh, it's been a while. But I think this is gonna work. Okay, so let me see if I can walk you through this. So we have our clock over here, right? So if it's in the off state like this, and let's make sure 14 items, yeah. It powers the timer, I had to move it over here. Just works a little bit better. So it's turned off right now. All right, so, and this thing is getting powered by this torch here, okay? So if this torch is on, this whole system is shut off, right? And it gets its signal from all this crazy wiring here. This is kind of like an end gate. It's a weird end gate. But basically this torch and this torch have to be off so that this torch can be powered on. Which when it return powers this off, right? Because it inverts the signal here. And it gets, so like if this one, because this one powers this wire and this one powers this wire. So both of these power the same wire that currently turns this one off. This one here only shuts off if there's an item inside, right? If there's an item inside, it shuts off, and you can see this is still powered because down here, this also needs a signal from the block detector. So both of these conditions are correct. It activates our timer. You saw it shut out the item, and because there's nothing more in there, it now shuts off the system again. So that kind of works. Like I said, the only downside is that we need to make sure that we have at least something in there that's dividable by eight, right? And as soon as it's empty, it shuts off. So we could already, I think, put these guys in here. And I don't know where the other ones are. 
That's weird. I wonder if I lost them by accident. Oh wait, do we still have like soul forge steel ones? No, these are all empty. Am I just blind? Because we had six of them. Oh, then here in the filter. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah. Before we forget this, the filter needs a uh, soul sand. Otherwise, we're gonna have chaos here. The only thing I still need to do is like power this guy as well from the side. So I should do this before we start this. Actually, let me do this right now. All right, there we go. That should be okay. So it's getting powered from the side. Hopefully that doesn't get shut off when I like do stuff here. In fact, we should probably try this right now. Because if this gets shut off while we toss in stuff there, we get gas and stuff. Seems fine. So I tried to place this, which makes sense. Okay. But I think that should be it, right? So let's put the remaining ones in here as well. So let's go... I mean... If you get a stack, that's eight... Eight of these guys. We only have six right now, right? So let's just do 32. And I'm going to put these blocks back here. So it always lands on the center. Okay, let's try. That did not work. <laughs> Shoot. Why not? Oh, it did. No, it didn't. I think it's one item too short. Yeah, it's one item too short. So we actually need to extend the signal by one. And then that should work. So if it does three more times... Oh, it didn't break. How much did it actually do? 32 times, yes. But that, that didn't work. Or maybe it did work. No, there we go. Okay. Alright, let me go turn these into steel and then we try it again. We only got... I think I'm missing some, actually. Yeah, I tossed them on the ground still. Alright, we're gonna try this one more time. So we have that extra cobblestone in there, so it should be slightly longer. It's possible that there's like a repeater signal. Oh, perfect. It has enough time also to like place the block close. The block uh, dispenser at the bottom is a little bit slow. Oh, sick, it works. Nice. I mean, you know, again, this is not like, we could probably just do this manually, but it's kind of cool to have this, you know. If we just make a ton of these urns, we don't really have to worry about running out of them. And we can always just dump in like a stack of dust in there. Oh man, I love this. Okay, and that's it, right? Yeah, it's empty, so it shuts off. Cool, and we got three, we should have four. I think... Yeah, it's tossing items on the side, so we may have to like... Close this off, I hope that works. I can't put a block behind there. All right, just doing the final touches here. Although for some reason, like I'm gonna put a chest. Here. Well, this is a bit tight here, isn't it? But I just want a chest here so we can pick it up. For some reason, that does get set on fire. So I want to have a quick look here again. Is there anything we can do to prevent this? One thing I could think of. Ow! So it sets this on fire. What if I do it like this? Is this still gonna get set on fire? Because one thing we could do is maybe try to do these as chisel blocks. Like if I just take a chisel and remove like a little bit from the side, I wonder if they can still burn. If not, then we should maybe do that or I don't know, just use a different block, I guess. Um, and this looks horrible right now. It's very flat looking. <laughs> I don't know how to improve this. I really should have put this maybe one further back to make this look somewhat decent. We could try to make this, let's see, I'm sure the episode is already super long, but I do want to kind of work on this. We do something like this maybe, and uh, it's a little bit better maybe. <laughs> maybe a little bit better. Maybe. What if I remove these again? I don't think I like those, but then I would have to replace those too. Or, now that we replaced them, we can probably put this back again. And you know what, that's not terrible, although I don't know about this, but... Oh, because I was thinking maybe we can put chests up here or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna make more of these, uh, of these, uh, thingies. Although, I don't... It's still on... 
Oh no, this should be get picked up now. I'll put another ender hopper there. Let's double check this. Yeah, it's gonna get picked up. I'm just thinking like how to do this properly because we don't have, how many do we have? We have six right now, right? So if I put a stack in here, well technically, oops. Well technically it should shut off the system, right? Because it won't have enough urns at the bottom. So I'm gonna stand here and watch this a little bit and see what happens. And this is burning again. Oh, it messed up. The uh, the thing didn't get placed quickly enough. This thing here was too slow. So now the order is wrong. Uh, still problems. I maybe will replace the one at the back with a vanilla dispenser too and just have a timer there again. Because here it's a very long timing, right? Yeah, it's like too risky. Okay, I shall do that. All right, well, it does work though. I mean, we also get, you know, all this stuff out of here. Although, do we, wait, did we get all of it? I put a stack in there. Um, is it still picking up stuff? It's missing five. Oh, here. Oh, I see. Oh, because it didn't get converted, I guess. Okay, that's fine. So it's, it's, it has its flaws, but it's also pretty cool. So I'm just gonna spend some time here, probably make a ton of uh, soul, fear, a lot. soul forged steel complicated name and I don't know we could I mean we could replace a lot of our gears and gearboxes with the mid metal ones as well but uh, I don't think I need to but I definitely want to make that spring action thing so that's sh that should be good that uh, bellow but we're gonna call it here for today hopefully I can cut this down so it's not extremely long I'll try to figure out what to do with this wall I still don't quite like it, it looks a bit derpy and uh, just clean this all up a little bit more probably remove this column here and put a lock there so we can have a hallway here and maybe move this chest somewhere else because it could it could fit up here too you know if you put it up there or something i don't i don't know i'll figure it out hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to leave a like and i'll see you guys soon bye bye